Violence is not an option. Just because you have a problem doesn't mean nobody else has them. A hurting someone is definitely not the way to solve them. Listen to your inner conscience and bring peace, love, and unity in the violence not needed in my life, in your life, nor in our community. We have to love each other. We have to cherish each other. Be there for each other. Never hurt each other. Believe in each other. Help each other and hold each other. Only by that will we get past all the violence and killings going on in our community. Put down the guns, leave the drugs alone, stop the violence, end all the senseless death and violent sightings. Trying to push them buttons in all kinds of sizes, pushing we wind and fast forward, but the button is stuck. You can't rewind to undo what you did, you can't fast forward past the consequences. Once you take someone's life, there is no giving it back. So stop and think before you act. My name is Anuma Davis Kahina. Live up and stop the bleeding. It takes four generations to recover from every single act of violence. So please, stop and think about the situation before you go any further. And think about the generations of families you're hurting by doing any act of violence. Live up, my people. Live up. The U.S. Virgin Islands is made up of four islands, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, and Water Island. While each island is unique unto itself with diverse flavors of culture, commerce, and lifestyles, three of the major islands all share one thing in common, gangs. To the untrained eye, Images like this would pass for just another amateur form of self-expression, conjuring up images of teenagers with too much angst and time on their hands. But for those who choose to look beyond that first glance, a form of code starts to take form, made up of signs and letters that translate into boundaries and warnings. Like staking a claim to a parcel of land Gangs take self-imposed ownership of neighborhoods, or turf, marked with a clear message to rival gangs that states, do not enter. Lavelle Campbell knows these signs all too well, and has made it part of his job to analyze the symbols and phrases that seem to be spreading across walls, vacant buildings, and schools. Look at the perimeter fencing that we had to put up in this school because of vandalism that we've been having at this school. You see the OMC? That's how artistic they get, you know? And then they put the dollar sign to represent only money count. His official title is school security manager for the Department of Education. But he is much more than that. Previously, as head of security for the governor's office, his skill sets have been acquired through years of training and instinct. As a husband and father, he believes strongly in family values and education, which is one of the reasons he is passionate about trying to stop the spread of gangs in our schools. Right off the bat, I can tell you it's about 11 groups. You have the Bloods, you have the Crips, you have the Trinitinos, you have the Latin Kings. You also have the Zopound out of Haiti. You also have Haters Fall Back, which is a female gang. You have Official Bad Bitches, another female gang. You also have the Cherry Units, another female gang. Then you have the New Breed. These are all gangs that affiliate. These are all gangs that we know. We find the writing, we find the markings. We know individuals that's affiliated with those gangs. Uh, here in the territory, we know it's that I know of by tracking students in school and some that's out of school, we have an estimation about 300 members that may be affiliated with one or the other gang. Geographically now, the gangs are set up where the area you're from. For example, when it comes to Bloods, here in St. Thomas, we know Bordeaux, we know Corin Terrace, we know PMP, we know Harris Court, we know Bavoni, we know Smith Bay, we know Anna's Retreat, AKA Alcatraz 215. We know all of those 
are subgroups of the Bloods. When it comes to the Crips, which is a, a second group, we know that St. John, we know that Lime Street, we know that Tutu Projects, and we know that Ras Valley and Savan is all affiliated with that group. In St. Croix, because of the higher level of Hispanics, you're seeing the same Bloods and Crips, like Kennedy Real Killers, which can net you anywhere. And Kennedy KRKs is a housing project called Kennedy and they rock, rock red. Everything is red with them. You also have in St. Croix, Strawberry, another area that we know have the same blood set. You have the Latin Kings and the Trinitinos on that side as well. If there is an expert on gangs in the U.S. Virgin Islands, the name Lavelle Campbell certainly comes to the forefront. His assessment of gangs comes from taking thousands of photos, confiscating hundreds of weapons, and gang paraphernalia from children ranging in ages from as young as six to 18 years of age. Well, uh, this school year, 2009-2010, this year alone, I already got a first grader at the age of six with two knives, not just one, that walked to school because of a altercation he had the day before in the playground. And he decided to walk with that weapon or those weapons to kill the individual he had the altercation with. I also this year discovered a knife off of a eight-year-old that walked to the school and had it as a toy showing his friends, thinking that that is something positive to do. Scenes like this are becoming all too common, not only with young males, but also young females. Thanks to cell phone technology, hundreds of segments just like this are readily viewed on websites like Facebook and YouTube. Some of these physical confrontations and fights might be attributed in part to raging hormones, emotional issues at home, or he said, she said. On the other hand, it could be a form of initiation into a gang that requires proof or documentation. The most common problems that we see is um, a lot of children are misguided. And they have this misconception in terms of how they should act, what, they what should they represent, how they should go along to the day-to-day, -day, and what their values are in terms of education and of lifestyle. And that becomes really saddening when you read about it in the paper every single day. Either a teen is getting arrested for some crime, either a teen is dropping out of school for whatever reason, and or you have this constant gang rivalry that's taking place throughout our community that are specifically targeting children that are between the ages of 12 and 18, and sometimes even younger. And the sad part about it is that if anyone has studied the history of gangs, gangs could be good things or gangs could be bad things. It's just how you interpret it. Um, basically, a gang is just an affiliation of people that represent one common belief. And it's so sad when I talk to my students or I listen to what they have to say or I read their gang symbols of the, on the walls throughout our community and even sometimes in the schools. What, we're, what, what they're really thinking, you know, they, it comes to a point where you start to question um, how is it that they manifest these ideas of wanting to belong to a gang? What is it that draws them to be part of the gang? And is there a way that a community as a whole could sway away that, that gang affiliation of some sort? I know that there was a time where I was passing down McDonald's by Lockhart. And I see a group of students congregating, and I, you know, you can tell based on what their gang colors are that they were part of a gang. And I proceeded to ask a police officer, well, if you know that they're part of a gang and they're congregating in a public place where other children are coming in and out of, is there a way where you can break that up? And I was simply told, unless they're breaking the law, there's really nothing that we can do. What would be any different if you and your group, a sorority group, would come in dressed in certain colors and wanted to congregate in front of McDonald's, what would that make it any difference? So with that I realized, you know, unless we start changing the mindset of the community to realize that 
This gang issue is really taking a toll on our children and on everyone that's involved, but it's gonna continue to present a set of problems, and that's sad.